Our island of prosperity is a collective accomplishment that we can all take pride in because we built it together, brick by brick. For example, about 80% of BC's unionized public sector employees are covered by agreements no negotiated under the economic stability mandate. This happened because 250,000 hard-working men and women said yes and gave themselves a stake in growing the economy. This is crucial. To grow and diversify our economy, we must have the courage to say yes. Yes to recognizing that economic development and environmental protection go hand in hand. Yes to planning for future growth and creating a climate where job-creating businesses can thrive. Because a growing economy is not an accomplishment for its own sake. It's the only way to sustain, much less expand, critical services for a growing and aging population. It's the only way to make investments in infrastructure, schools, and hospitals. It's the only way to create real opportunities for families. Your government's strategy to increase international trade continues to pay real dividends. Total exports from BC are worth over 35 billion per year, an increase of 41% since 2009. In that same time, exports to China have increased 116%. Exports to India have increased 660%. A major part of that success has been increasing the number of trade and investment representatives abroad. That number will increase again in 2016 with a new trade office in the Philippines. Of the eight key sectors of the BC Jobs Plan, the fastest growing is tech. It's already employing more than 86,000 British Columbians at wages 60% higher than the industrial average. Your government's new BC tech strategy will attract and reward investment, create jobs, and provide more training. One of the products BC is known around the world for is agriculture. BC's precious coasts have long been known for their abundant and sustainable seafood, and they represent our most significant opportunity to address world hunger. Last year, at $3 billion, was the highest ever sales of BC food and beverage products. This year, your government will continue its work to increase provincial revenues in agri-foods and seafoods to 15 billion a year by 2020. Climate change and increasing demands on water are challenging global agricultural production, in particular in the US and Mexico where much of our fresh produce is grown. Combined with the current low Canadian dollar, this creates rising food prices, which are putting a strain on BC families. Part of the solution to that challenge is reflected in the success BC agriculture ex is experiencing. Already, your government has grown the size of agricultural land reserve and modernized the operations of the Agricultural Land Commission. This year, your government will build on those successes by increasing its financial support for the commission and moving forward with a tax credit for farmers that donate food to nonprofits. And in November, the first ever provincial agri-foods conference will be held in Kelowna, focusing on food supply security for BC. British Columbians recognize the value of our agricultural sector in ensuring our food supply security, and this is supported through the Buy Local program. Your government will expand on these efforts by piloting work with industry, local governments, and community organizations to encourage and support British Columbians to buy local and grow local. This work will get more British Columbians engaged in growing food at home and in their communities. It will provide another source of fresh fruits and vegetables 
and further strengthen the connections between British Columbians, our communities, and our agricultural sector. Red tape restricts growth, impedes flexibility, and makes life more complicated for families. That is why your government extended its commitment to a net zero increase in regulatory requirements to 2019. Since 2001, there has been a 43% total reduction in requirements, 155,000 needless rules removed, with more than 1,700 in 2015 alone. More than 5,900 British Columbians have submitted their ideas on reducing red tape. Over the coming months, many of those will become reality. Right now, more than 200 red tape reduction projects are underway or completed. A major component of your government's plan for growing a diver and diverse economy is the opportunity presented by LNG. There are 20 active projects at various stages of development. Over 30 investment partners are involved, and between them, they have invested some $20 billion. There is no question that unforeseen global condition, conditions are posing new challenges. Low global prices will have an impact on your government's initial timelines. But government has done everything it's set out to do to attract investment for the cleanest LNG in the world. As companies consider their best opportunities to reach final investment decisions, your government will continue to work to bring home the opportunity of LNG to BC. Sus success is not for quitters. Success demands steadfast attention and resiliency in the face of global challenges. It is not a choice between keeping BC's natural gas industry stable or deciding to grow it. We must begin to export, or the 13,000 people who depend on this industry today will be out of work. As the world's cleanest burning fossil fuel, demand for an LNG will increase, and with it, the price. And your go government will ensure there is equity for future generations of British Columbians by establishing a prosperity fund to leave an endowment for future generations to pay down and eliminate the debt, and to invest in the services and infrastructure that British Columbians rely on to get ahead.